Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this in-depth painting tutorial for the uh, Plus channel here. Uh, so there's a regular uh, Skitari painting tutorial already on the on the regular Strike and Scorpion 82 channel, uh, but for here on the Plus channel, I'm going to show you how to paint more of a challenging uh, project here for Skitari. So we're going to try and paint one of these uh, Onagar Dune crawlers here. So uh, obviously a lot bigger model than an infantry figure. Um, we're going to be sh showing you from start to finish how to paint uh, this model up. So we've got all of the uh, metal work here to do the, the big base on this one to cover as well. We're also going to show you how to do transfers uh, so you can uh, get the transfers put on nicely. You've got things like gems uh, and chipping effect and so on to paint as well. So a fair bit to cover on this one here uh, but it's just going to show you how to apply the techniques um, that I teach in all of the painting tutorials but how to apply it to a bigger project and how to paint up these Skitari vehicles. Now you can take this colour scheme uh, and this process and just apply it to all the other Skitari vehicles, uh, no problem. I'm working on uh, some Dragoons at the moment here. This one's half done, uh, but it's exactly the same process that you see with the Onagar uh, Dune Crawler. In this episode, will be the exact same process you use here for things like these Dragoons and so on. So um, just apply the same technique, no problem at all. So that's the finished model. Uh, we're going to be painting this one here. We've already uh, put it together. Um, and then we're just going to get it up to the same standard. Okay, so just going to run through the paints that you'll need for this project. Uh, there's a, a fair few there, some you're going to use more of than others. Um, so just to run through some washes, uh, Agrax Earthshade, Nolan Oil, and then Seraphim Sepia. Your inks, then we'll cover some metallics next, uh, Hushat Copper. Uh, then Iron Breaker, and then I've got the old Mithril Silver here, it's called Rune Fang Steel now, it's the new name. So it's another metallic that you'll need just there. Uh, I'll give a full list of all these paints in the description uh, on the video just below. Uh, and then a few main colours, uh, Ultramarines Blue, it's the old colour uh, now, it is called Altdorf Guard Blue. Uh, then. Uh, blazing orange, that's the old colour, it's now called Troll Slayer Orange. Then uh, Corn Red, it's that deeper, darker red uh, that we're going to use uh, for the main armour uh, bodywork on this Dune Crawler. Uh, so Corn Red. Then uh, Low Fern Blue, Ceramite White, just your basic black and white here, Abaddon Black. And then uh, Ushabti Bone. Then uh, Administratum Grey, and then uh, Flash Gets Yellow. There's a tiny bit of yellow on the project as well. Yeah, and then just one other shade of grey. I'll add it in. It's Dawnstone. Just use that for the base uh, highlighting. So Dawnstone is another colour you can use. Don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, Administratum Grey, Dawnstone, pretty similar in, in shade. So you could leave out one of those if you want to. Um, maybe just go for just the Administratum Grey. But I use the Dawnstone, it's a little bit darker grey, it's quite nice for doing the base work and highlighting that up. So uh, for preparation then, uh, this is the key point here, so uh, I'm going to try and show you how to paint to a nice standard here, but then at the same time I'm going to try and show you how you can save uh, time and effort by taking a few shortcuts. Um, because you want to get your army painted up and onto the battlefield pretty quick but still looking nice so it's that kind of balance between the two 
Um, there's a number of ways you can save plenty of time. A big way of saving time is your preparation, your undercoating and your spraying. Uh, this method here is just going to save you loads of time. So construct the model, clean it up, put it in all the position that you want it to, glue it all down. I don't paint any parts separate for this particular model, hardly ever do for projects. I just like to paint it straight on as it is. Um, so then I glue it to the base and then for basing uh, I use a bit of sandpaper around the edge and just sand the edge down here just so that the glue's got something nice and rough to, to stick onto. Um, so you can just run that around just the edge and maybe on some of the surface. You don't need to be too fussy, but especially the edge here. Try and just sand that down. Not the not the rim, don't keep gonna keep that nice and clean, but just the actual edge of the base. That gives something for the PVA glue to stick on. So use PVA glue, paint it onto the base into all the areas just using an old brush. And then I use um, some old stones, or some stones I got from the beach here. So it's kind of quite sort of just random sizes. I sprinkle those on in patches here and there with some larger stones mixed in. And then once they're on and shaken off, then the majority of the basing is made up of just regular sand. I think it's called sharp sand, which has shoes, uh, you get it from builders, merchants. It's just got regular sand, but it still has small pieces of stone in it and you can sieve that through, take out the really big bits of stone and then what's left are these smaller bits and then the regular sand and I just pour that over the base, tap it down or tap tap the base to make sure it's all on and then just knock off what's spare and then run my thumb around the edge to take off any excess bits that are hanging over the edge because they'll get knocked off anyway during games and so on so just use my thumb to take them away and then set it, leave it to dry completely, don't disturb it uh, and you know, don't be too impatient, you've got to wait for that to dry completely solid. And once that's dry, uh, you're ready for spraying. So the first thing I spray is the base. And for that, I spray just my usual colour uh, of the Stealth Grey. That's by Montana, Montana Gold, Montana Gold Acrylic. Uh, they're sort of an aerosol graffiti artist type company, so you can buy it from those kind of places. I think eBay sells it as well. This one's called Stealth, code is 7070, and then you can use that uh, to spray. It's sort of a dark grey, it's a nice colour for the rim, it's a nice finish there, and it gives you a darker colour to do all the shading on the stones, and you just highlight up from that, so it's going to save you plenty of time. So just spray around, some of it gets flicked onto the model, it's not too much of a problem, but just spraying the base, just rotating the model around and spraying it and it gets that kind of finish. I have modelled on some other plastic parts from different kits just to add uh, a bit of effect uh, onto the model here. I'll show you how to paint and chip and weather those kind of things later on. Once that's dry, you do have to leave it to dry, uh, I then usually take like some uh, tissue uh, and it must be dry because you don't want it tacking and, and sticking onto this the edge here when it's completely dry. Just run some tissue underneath the model, wrap it around the feet Generally, it doesn't have to be perfectly done because you'll, you'll touch that up with silver later on. Once that's entirely covered around, then I then give it a, a coat of silver, making sure I sort of aim up underneath to make sure the paint gets underneath the model. The silver I use for that uh, is Plate Mail Primer, and that's by uh, Army Painter. It's a nice spray, uh, it goes on pretty good, uh, and it just gives you a nice uh, finish there. That means all the metal work, which there is a fair bit, you can see the finished model here. See all the legs. That's all done. And the base colour is silver, so you know it's a good colour for all the other colours to go on to, um, as you'll see later on. It's just going to save you tons and tons of time. If you spray it white or black, you've got a lot of work to do, a lot of brush work to do, a lot of layers to build up. But when you go straight on with silver, all of a sudden uh, you've got a whole load of the process done. So uh, I let that all go on. As I said, not worried too much if it doesn't cover the feet entirely, we'll just brush that in a bit later. Then take that away, once that's completely dry, and this is very, very important, I've found that if you go on with inks and paints, sometimes uh, these primers, they, they're a bit glossy and the paint sort of pulls and it doesn't spread out and, and dry properly. So the key then is to give the whole model, not so much the base you need to worry about, but uh, any features on the base, which you're going to be painting on, they'll need to be coated, and the model itself. Wherever this doesn't go, um, 
then there's that danger of the washes not, not going in properly and they, they won't stick on the model. So make sure you work that purity seal in up and underneath the model as much as you can. Make sure you spray from every angle, making sure the paint, uh, making sure the spray goes on evenly across the top and so on. Once that's completely dry, then you're at, at this stage ready to paint. What you've got is a model that all the basing's done, the shading's done on the base, the rim's done, the silver's done, uh, and loads of hard work's finished, and you, you haven't even used any brushes yet at all. So it's just going to save you tons of time, loads and loads of time, and you can just get straight on with your base covers and working on the base. Um, so it just speeds up the process by a fair bit. All right, so onto the first stage, then we're going to work on the base first of all, and it's just to highlight and bring that up. Um, so I've got my two colours here, Dawnstone, the grey, which we'll do first, and then we'll go on to do a, a highlight of Ceramite White. This is an old Ceramite White here, it's coming towards the end of its time. Um, it's been thinned down a fair bit and sort of old. That's a handy time to use those kind of paints for rough work like basing and so on. And then save your smoother, newer paints um, for more delicate work. It's got a wash brush here, it's dried out nicely. I'm going to take some of the Dawn Stone. Just scrubbing it onto a palette to take away most of the paint and then just scrub it onto the base. Over all the stonework, scrubbing at different angles. And then being careful when I come up to the edge of the base, I don't want to flick it onto the onto the rim here. I want to keep that nice and clean. If any does go on, just wet my finger and just rub it off before it dries. So again, do a bit more. Just scrubbing it onto the, the base. Coming in at different angles. Doesn't matter if your brush is slightly damp, that will help the paint go on a bit better. It's better that than your brush being bone dry. And then just working the highlight in. It's not too noticeable, but it uh, it does make a big difference if you go straight on with the white. It looks too stark, it doesn't look very good at all, but this is a good in-between colour. Just scrubbing it on. Again, coming up to the edge, I just flicked a bit onto the edge there, so just use a wet finger. Wipe that off. This is going on well. Just going to scrub in here. A bit neat around here. Not too worried if I flick it onto any of this metal work here, that will get its own coat of silver a bit later on. And up to the edge. It's quite quick this technique, but I think it's pretty effective. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to finish the uh, highlight here. Okay, so that's that highlight done. Then what I do is I take the uh, Ceramite White, I don't even wash the brush out, because I don't want a perfect white anyway. Going onto the model, uh, off white's fine, there's a bit of grey mixed in there, doesn't matter. And then I just carefully highlight the stonework just there. And again, not too worried. If it flicks a little bit onto the the metal there, I'm just scrubbing that on. And that highlights that you can see the difference there. And just lifts that and again, nice and quick. Not too much effort at all. You know, it's something that can look very effective. Doesn't take much skill. As well, you can get a nice effect. Don't overload your brush with too much paint. I'll just start filling in the details that look wrong. Um, so you want to just. Keep it light. Just working in there. Like so. Now this paint's been thinned down a bit. Um, if you want to lighten it a bit more, wait till it dries, come back, and then maybe on the more higher and more extreme areas, just do a second lighter coat. That just lift that lifts that just a little bit more. Okay, so that's the highlighting done. You can see the effect just there. So the next stage uh, is to uh, do all the metal work on the feet where they're grey, they need to have the metal work put in, just where it didn't get down low enough with a spray. Uh, and then 
any uh, metal. I've got some battlefield debris here, part of an imperial fist uh, storm talon there, all scratched up and modelled onto the terrain, onto the base. There's a few other scrap bits of metal, uh, and there's part of an engine exhaust here as well. Just going to give it all a coat of this uh, silver here. So this is the uh, iron breaker. Now I'm going to paint some yellow on here. Um, so, but I'm going to still coat the entire thing here in this iron breaker. The yellow will go on better onto the silver than it will onto the dark grey. So, even though I've still got a layer of paint to put on top, I'm just going to give it a base colour of the silver. Using the wash brush here, just taking my time, keeping it neat as possible. Don't want to go onto the stones. Just going up near them on the side here because it's quite a thick uh, panel like so on the end then there's this engine exhaust give it a coat of this iron breaker now this is silver colour going straight onto dark grey which is a perfect base to go onto the paint's going on nicely because it's got purity seal on there so the paint's not going to bubble and it's going to stick on just nice it's gone on just in one coat will do that nicely uh, because that dark grey is, is perfect uh, base for that to go on now then the, the metal work that I haven't yet covered in the silver just being careful with the base uh, around the uh, the feet here just as they come in contact with the base Stones, don't want to go onto the stones, just being neat around there, working the paint in. Anywhere else on the model where the undercoat perhaps hasn't reached, you can use uh, the silver to fill that in, but be aware if you haven't put the purity seal on, then uh, you may well struggle to get the paint to stick on properly. Just working around the foot here and I think that's pretty much it just making sure I'm in at every angle there so that's got that silver on I'll do the other four um, and then that's that stage finished all right so uh, that's the silver all done now that's got completely dry I do need to put a wash here on the base and there's other stages to do but we'll just let that go for now um, because I just want that to dry completely so just going to go onto the model next um, so we're going to paint the copper areas that's things like, uh, as you see here on the base, uh, this kind of trim and finish is in a, uh, a coppery bronze kind of effect. So we're going to put that on first. Uh, so what I've got here is the Hashak Copper. Uh, it's a bit of an older paint here, so I'm just going to lift out some of this paint. Put it onto a palette. You don't have to do this if you've got a nice fresh pot. I'm just going to water it down a little bit here. So it's got a nice flow to it. Not too much because you want to have enough pigment cover the model. I'm using an older uh, base coat brush here because I don't have to be too neat with this one. Just generally neat. So uh, for example we'll, we'll do this panel here. So just painting the copper on and not too fast if it goes on to where the red's going to be because we'll cut that in neatly later on. So I'll make sure it goes into all the angles here. I don't want to miss any parts. That's going on to there quite nice. And just around to the other side, filling it in. Then, neatly, this side of the panel as well needs to be covered. So it's quite hard to see in places. Don't worry about it too much if you can't see it, or especially where it's visible. Just run the brush in along there. You want to be pretty neat for that. Like so. So. Uh, it's just the same, uh, brilliant colour um, to go on to silver. Again, it's going to save you time. This has gone on in one coat because I've got that base colour of silver underneath. Um, it's just one coat straight on and that's quite watered down and it's gone on just nice. So brilliant head start you get when you undercoat with silver. So there's a few other areas to do this. The rest of these panels, um, I'm going to do this colour on the model now and then I'll show you where I've been. Okay, so that's done. Just look around the model. This, it's actually only these panels that require the copper, so just got them down. The the, the colour that I'm doing, or the colour scheme that I'm doing, is um, it's pretty much the Mars pattern. 
but you'll see in the book that there's loads and loads of uh, cream on the uh, metal work here around the legs. And I just looked it and I thought, well, it's gonna take, that's a painstaking, it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of work. Uh, I thought, well, it looks just as nice with the metal like that. There's some areas I've done in the cream, as you see in the colour skin that Games Workshop do, like here. Um, but I've reduced that down and that will save loads of time. But uh, just with the copper, just around the edge like so. And it's ready for the red to come on a bit later. All right, so next color is I've got the flash gets yellow here. This is optional, as I said, depends how you're doing um, your basing, but I'll just add it in anyway, just as an extra. Um, so you've got the uh, panel here, Imperial Fists panel. So I'm going to just put some yellow on. Now there's some battle damage and scrapes along here, so I'm going to put a little, not as much yellow, that's where it's all, the paint's perhaps burnt off. So I'm not too fussed about being ultra neat with this one. Like so. A little bit on the side. Just trying to keep the brush strokes nice and neat, just dabbing it on really. On in patches like that. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just looking at my storm talent, which I have on uh, reference here. There is a little bit of black panelling as well, which I'll add in. Just the tip of the wing. Just add that in black. Just adds a nice dimension, area of interest onto your model uh, when you use debris and different parts. It just means. Yes, the emphasis is the model, but there's something that complements it there as well. I think it's worth doing. So that's that done. Uh, that dry. Um, you're ready to put the inks on the base. Yeah, just to mention the flash gets yellow. There is an area that you can use it uh, on the model, and that's the lights. These searchlights at the front. The in between the grills here is sort of a yellow light that I'm doing. So I'm just taking some of that and working it in. Now, being careful not to get it onto the metalwork, uh, but the grill itself, that will be repainted and neatened up later on, so it doesn't matter if you get it onto there, but just filling that in with the yellow. Um, and then some washes will go in there to finish that off uh, later on. But yellow just on any of those search sites. There's only one here, the other one's got this repair thing here instead, so just the one. Okay, so then uh, next colour is the. Uh, Ultramarines Blue or the Alt Dwarf Guard Blue. That's for any gems and lights. So, for example, there's one just in here. This is the base colour we're going to use for this. It's a bit neat, don't really want to get it onto the silver. Like so, just tucked in there. And then there is actually one just underneath. Just working the brush that goes all the way around the gem, not just on the surface. Then, I mean, the general rule is anywhere where there's sighting equipment and sort of gem type things, there's one just here target above the targeting system or the site for the Icarus array. These binoculars here, two of those bits I'm going to do in the blue. So, again, being neat with a brush, don't want to go on too many edges, making, still making sure though that I get all the way around. I'm calling them gems here because they're painted in exactly the same way as I do for jet, like Eldar gems and so on. Just making sure the brush goes all the way around. Like so, so that's fine. Then there's a gem just inside here. Again, part of the sighting equipment for the main gun. It's sort of logical where you think they're going to be. You know, anything to do with uh, vision for the vehicle and then anything to do with weaponry and sighting equipment and so on. Shouldn't find any anywhere else. There is actually some underneath just right tucked in here. There's one just there and then there isn't ones on the side but there is one at the back and that must be like sighting equipment for moving through terrain something like that. So that's that, just look around to see if there's anything else. Don't think so, okay. Right, next is your Shabti bone. Uh, I'm gonna use an old uh, base coat brush here. 
as some of the panels have this on, uh, the edge of the uh, searchlight here has it. As I said, if you reference this in the book, you'll see that it's all over the legs and so on. Uh, that's a fair bit of work. If you want to go ahead and do that, that's totally fine, and it'll, it will look very nice. Uh, but this is sort of a time time sort of saving technique here. If you do want to dedicate more time to doing that, then it's perfectly fine. And it will it will look nice, but it'll just be more work involved. So I've done that one there, just edging it. I'm just going to do one coat because I'll have to recoat it, highlight it later. And um, for this one. I'll coat this as well. Sort of got a bit of license to choose what to paint and what to leave. And then I've also got the inside of the uh, Icarus array here. So where the hatch is opened up, just running the brush to the edge. Uh, this actual trim at the edge itself will be red, so I don't need to fold around there with the paint, just painting the inside parts. So, just there, that edge there, and on the inside, up the side like that as well. It's pretty much most of this. But being careful not to go over my uh, blue and edges, but you can do the rest here. Like so. And then above, just inside here. Doesn't matter if it does go around to the other edge, you know you're gonna paint the red over the top to neaten it up anyway. I just want a nice Good nice coat on there. I think one coat will be enough because again it's going to be repainted later on and tidied up. Uh, but just going around the model. You don't have to be neat, it does speed things up a bit. Just tucking the paint into there. Looking pretty good. Okay, so that's that there. Then you do have the uh, the inside sort of the turn wheel here uh, it's just underneath and then these bits here and again this paints going onto the areas that will have red but I'll use the red to neaten later on that bit there is in the cream color shabty bone like so Good, it's a nice colour to add into this model. Uh, and just checking to see if there's anywhere else. That's pretty much it for that colour. So, making good progress, it's starting to introduce colours onto this model, it's looking good. Uh, red's going to be the major one, uh, which we will come on to soon. Right, so we've got black and then a dark silver to do. Uh, so, we'll do a dark silver first. That's for any areas that have these ribbed type pipes. You'll see them on the model. There's a couple here. There's a load of them up underneath here. So it's piping but ribbed effect. I usually do that in not a pure silver uh, with the iron breaker, but I mix it with some black to make a dark silver. Sort of quite a nice finish. It just gives another shade to show that you made an effort there to, to pick out a different colour. Uh, so just wherever. I want to be neat with this one. Don't want it going onto the rest of the silver work. But just working it underneath. model here, so anywhere where that piping is, I'll give it a coat of that. So, it's not too much of it on the model. It's not much at all. So I will go to uh, here where it appears. Just want to be neat. Go around to the other side. Pick it out just there, then it's on here, and then just do the opposite side, just there. That's pretty much it. 
uh, depending on what vehicle and so on you're painting you'll see more or less of it but I usually like to pick out that piping in that darker version of the silver right then where you find uh, solid piping that's piping uh, that doesn't have that ribbed effect then I just do those pipes in black now you can do them in different colors um, again it's just going to be more work but I've black's quite nice it doesn't detract now, if you go for a bright neon green or something like that it can distract from the main model so I've gone for something that I'm still making the effort to paint them because um, they do look better if you paint them but I'm doing them in a color that I just paint them in black and then I won't need to come back to them again so there's because they are quite sort of insignificant on the model there's one just there there's one tucked underneath and again just being neat I don't want to get black paint onto the silver work but I don't want to get pretty good coverage there's piping here sort of electrical cables really on the back of the legs I'm just going to do one at a time to make sure I get both sides now there's one here just means that they're picked out and they're done, and they're done in black so that you won't need to come back to them. You can focus on the rest of the model. What is a nice effect, if you really want to spend extra time, is the the alternating yellow-black sort of striped effect. It does it really nice, but it is time-consuming. It's a lot of effort to do. Um, other colours for cables, you know, brown, green, sort of a darker green, looks quite nice. Red, orange can all look pretty good, just that there'll be more effort involved but not too bad quite easy to do um, but I've gone for black piping here throughout this Skitari army even on the infantry and so on as well so just the piping I'm just checking my angles to make sure it's all covered and looking pretty good so it's just those getting those details done so that's that finished so uh, usually, as you see in other tutorials, I, I, I do the, the ink washes uh, on the base, but Seraphim Seph would be the first one, and it's actually going to be used on the main model here, so I just do the whole lot together. Um, I can't see that being a problem. So the main colour then, and this is going to take you a while, is the red. So it's corn red is what we're going to use. Sort of a darker red here. show you the difference on one of the Dragoon models. So you've got your this sort of scarlet red colour here for the tunics you'll see a lighter colour check out the uh, the regular painting tutorial for Scutari you'll see that I use that, uh, that red there it's actually um, Evil Sun Scarlet um, but then for the armour panels and if you look at the codex you'll see it's a darker red um, so to make it separate from the armour which I think is a good idea I've gone for corn red nice colour um, and again brilliant colour to paint straight onto silver um, so that's what we'll do next just to mention Details like this, see the, the Abmex symbol here, um, there's another one on the back. Um, there's not really any point in, in picking those colours out yet. We can do all the shading and then you just paint that as a detail later on and then chip it up. So it's, again, it's going to save you time. Uh, don't worry about those, I'll show you how to do those at the end. Just the shading around them is what you'll be doing uh, later on. Uh, that'll be the first stage and getting them done. Um, so red now, I'm going to paint on nice and evenly and smooth. Um, so keep your paint nice and thin. Uh, nice brush and then we're just going to paint all of these areas so corn red's quite a new paint this one it's got a nice flow to it and I'll probably use a mixture of brushes depending on whereabouts I am on the model smaller brush for detailed areas because I don't want to get this paint flicked onto silver areas I want to keep it neat um, so I'm going to start out with a wash brush just to paint these larger panels Add a little bit of water to my paint there just paint the obvious area so you know this is one of those colors that just transforms the model so there's a nice flow to this paint found the corn red has a nice pigment to it which is really good it means that probably we'd get away with just doing one coat and it goes all the way around the equipment here the sighting equipment I'm just going to paint in the vision slit that red's quite dark we'll fill it in with washes later on and then around the sighting equipment here I'm not going to paint the insides, the washes will fill that in I'm just going to paint to the edge like so and that will do 
So, I'm just using that to fill in all the details. You really want to make sure you get all of the area painted that you should. I'm going to go neat around this edge, I want to get it onto the cream, making sure the rivets get covered, and then just working up the panel along here. So, you know, using a larger brush for the larger areas is a good idea. You can still be pretty neat. Um, but there will be areas where you have to go down to a smaller brush. So, looking pretty good. So you can see the panel's getting filled in. So I'm just going to carry on here, just get the rest of this colour done, and then I'll show you uh, what areas to paint. Um, just thought I'd show you a, sort of version, uh, uh, how to do it with a smaller brush. So we've got a standard brush here, it's a new brush, nice tip to it. I'm going to use that for picking out. Um, the red on this armor plate here. So just using the brush, working it in like so. Again, doesn't take too long, but I want the no spare paint around. I want a nice flow to it, nice even surface. It's got a lovely tip to it. I can just push into all of the corners so that I can get in there without disturbing that bronze. Even very tight areas, like just in that, like a tip of the brush, I can just push it in, and it will pick out that area, that uh, detail there. Now, look. So you're going to put a mark on, on. Uh, you know, I'm going to flick it onto the bronze there. It's no big deal. Uh, you are going to highlight it and so on later on. So you know, small mistakes aren't going to be too much of a problem. So I'm just going to work the brush to that edge. Thankfully all the edges are raised for you so that really does aid when you're painting. You just paint up to the edges that they've sculpted on, that they've provided for you. Just filling in the red here. It's worth making the effort, these panels are nice. If you do them nice and neat they'll look good, they're quite a focal point on the model. I have got it on the bronze, just using a finger to remove some spare, but that's gone on. If you're neat it's going to save you a lot of time, you can just go onto the highlight later on without having to do a lot of correcting work. So I'll carry on here, just keep this red uh, coming onto the model. Alright, so that's the red done. I was just using the one I've already painted as a reference. Uh, so uh, red just around the main body here, just tucking in underneath as well. You've got these panels and then also these plates here uh, done in red, but not going around the little studs that are sticking out and keeping those silver. Just around the rest of the uh, body here, being careful not to go onto these pipes the here and then the little grips on the bars here are done in red all the way around but the actual bars themselves, the handlebars are left in silver on top keep that silver there, any vents and so on have been kept silver uh, and then here again keeping the pipes and grip handles all um, in the silver as well, just noticed this bit. There's a little bit here that needs to be done in red. Like so, just making sure I go all the way around. Like that. Okay, so that bit's in red. Just there. Again, if you go onto the silver, it's not too big a deal. You can repair it once all the washes are done. Um, it's no problem at all. If it's really bad, just repaint some silver and then do the red again. Then just around here. On the gun, you can see where that is. The edge here in red, solid red underneath. Around the back, leaving all that area of silver, but still painting the edge just there red. Then underneath here, this little bit panel here uh, done in red as well. So it's a fair bit to do. It took me a while, it took me about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 25 minutes to get that all done, but that's the main chunk. I mean, the red is the big chunk to get done. Uh, we're almost ready for washes. Just notice, we've got to do some black here, a um, bit on these rocket pods, and then also the barrels here of these auto cannons. So we'll just get that painted in black next. Um, so just to take the black there, I'm going to use a standard brush and 
it's just here. So, just going up to the edge, just run the brush up, and then spin the model around, and then just go up to the edge there. The ends are actually silver, so it's just that panel. The, ba the main barrel that's going to be done in black, like so. Uh, and then we'll just get it done on the other side. Let's just run the brush underneath. And then I'll run the brush just on top. Black looks 80% decent enough. I'll give it another coat later on just to make it solid black. But for now, that fills it out quite nicely. Just run it to the end. There and to there. That's neat. Okay, so that's that. Like so. Then there's this part of the missile pod. Uh, just tucked in there. There's a central bit. Uh, uh, I can leave that silver. The actual missiles themselves I'll pick out later on, so I'm not too fussed about flicking paint onto them. But I don't need to actually paint them. They'll be grey. But just this strange shape, like a strange shape just pick that out on the surface there but also the sides of it will be black so I've then got to go around the edges being careful not to fill in uh, the gaps there but just to catch the edge of this shape going all the way around like so so that's that done just there I don't think there's anywhere else just looking over the model here that's it Okay, so pretty much ready now for the washes to go on. So Seraphim Sepias first. Uh, that's not going to go over the whole of the model here. We're going to use that to pick out the bronze and then the base. So we'll do that one next. Okay, so Seraphim Sepia. Um, I am also going to apply it to the uh, cream here. Complements the um, cream well. Not worried about so much the metal parts. Uh, I use Agrax on that, but here for these cream areas, any areas that you're going to use this sh a shabti bone, I'm going to use a bit of this Seraphim Sepia. It just comes up nice for shading. A little bit in here, just flow the brush in between. Like so, a little bit on here. Don't really want to get it onto the metal work, don't want it to look rusty too much. So, I think that'll be alright. I'm going to use it on the floodlight actually, just going to put some in there. Floodlight or searchlight, like so. Right, then you want to use it on the any areas where there's copper. Again, it's here for this June crawler, but uh, you know any uh, model you're painting with this technique for Skitari, just wherever the copper is. Just run this wash around. It really lifts and emphasises that colour quite nice. Like there. It's subtle, but it, it, it does help. Do the next one. Again, just using a wash brush here. Uh, but being careful with it, I don't want to get this brown. It's not a big deal if you do, but I don't want to get chunks of it onto the regular bodywork here. Because it will make the metal look a bit rusty. It's flown on there quite nicely. And we'll do the other one. It's quite quick this stage. We're going to washes now. So three stages. Um, for all the projects I've done really it's uh, base colours which is the, the main colours we put them onto the model washes now to add effect uh, and then final highlights comes later when you finish the model off so I've done all the washes there on the on the model now onto the base I usually flood some wash around wherever the feet touch the base so all around here just to sort of separate it from the base so to speak just like that 
around any big rocks usually I put a bit and just in random patches put some around these rocks here like so and that just takes away from that sort of standard stark grey you're now adding uh, so another dimension of colour in and it looks really nice uh, just all around these rocks here like so, just fold it around this foot like that. so it sort of helps to separate the model from the base uh, there's a panel here of silver just going to coat that so just to show you the panel here just give the whole thing a coat of this rusty wash it just tones the whole thing down links it into the base makes it become part of the terrain and just weathers it makes it look old and rusty you know like it's, it's a piece of debris that's maybe been there for years even months and it's just all rusted that and just flow the ink around and you start to see the effect we'll put another wash on top of that to tone it down even more um, but that's looking pretty good. So you can see the effect there. Just keep going. I'll go around this foot. Now a little bit of rust has gone onto the... Uh, make sure it doesn't go onto the rim, by the way, just wiping it away. A little bit of rust has gone onto this foot plate, but it doesn't matter. It's near the ground. It's going to be dirtier anyway, so it's no problem. So now we're up to this uh, exhaust here. I'm going to flood that with the wash. They look all grimy. It would have been a clean metal when it was in use, when it was part of the flyer, but now it's crashed and it's been exposed to the elements, it's all started to to rust and corrode. There, I'm just gonna flow some. I don't want to neglect the middle. Just because it's hard to reach, I still want to get the wash in there. We'll go around this last foot. All the cracks, and a few random patches. And we're looking pretty good. Yeah, pretty much done. So that's the base work done just there. Just making sure it's not on any of the edges, but you can see the effect building up quite nice. So let that dry. Don't want to disturb that, I'll put other washes on top because otherwise it'll just wash them away, it'll be pointless. So let that dry and before we go on to the next wash. Alright, so we got to know and all. I've got one of these big beefy ones here. Should last a fair bit. So wash brush again. And this is drying here, but the the uh the null nile is not really going to interrupt the other uh, seraphim sepia that's drying, if I'm careful. So, base work's done, not going to touch that. But the rest of the model, uh, we'll get that. So all the paint work, metal work, we'll get a coat of null oil. Let's run that on. Uh, the panels, I'm not going to coat the entire panel, because they're only going to have to be repainted. So I'm not too fussed about the open areas of the panelling, but all of the studs and so on will need to be done. So, just not worrying too much about that open area, but everywhere else, including all the vision slits, the metal work, the gems areas, all get a coat of this, then just being neat here, up to the cream. Try to take away any puddles that form, want it to be nice and even. This is a nice quick part here. Uh, paintwork and metal panels, you just run the brush over the whole lot, so nice and quick. You will just work the brush into every area, including these grip handlebars as well. Get all them coated. All the uh, sighting equipment, everything. Which is really handy because you're not having to be too neat. It links all the colours nicely together, so it's a good way of unifying the model. Again, just using a wash brush here, so some direction, but big enough to coat these areas quite quick. You do want to be quite furry. You do want the washes to be worked in. You don't want to miss. You don't want to miss areas. Uh, the back panels here, just flooding that all in. Like so, this antennae, 
the dome. Don't have flooded so you got big patches of the known oil so that it's flooded because you have to build that back up again and it's be annoying so you want to just make sure you're not letting it build up too thick. Just stabbing the wash in to make sure it's flown into all those crevices. So pretty rapid progress here. Do the side of the vehicle. Again, that's, too, that's way too heavy, so I've got to work it in. And then as a finishing area, just soak up the excess and move it on to another bit. If you go too thick, you'll have work to do to try and bring that up to standard. I've missed, you can see I've missed, this should be red here. I can correct that later. It's not going to make much difference at all. It doesn't really need to be shaded anyway. I'm just going to be painted on at the final stage, so there's no loss there. Just running the brush around. We'll do this side part here. All these bits. Just working the brush at different angles to try and catch all the different areas. These exhaust areas, just fill the brush into there. And then just take away the excess. Just drag it away. Don't want big thick areas. I hope that'll have to fit in later on. Then you get this back exhaust. Fill that in. It's going on really nice here. It's not p pulling or, or uh, forming puddles because I've used the um, spray, the varnish to give a coat first and that means that the wash is gone nice and evenly so it's a good job there's no trouble here at all with any pools and areas uh, for me. That's the main body done I'm just going to run the wash underneath across the whole area. Uh, you can do the inside of these panels but not where I shouldn't really bother um, because you can use Agrax surf shade to shade there again anyway so I won't do the insides of the panels here on the legs but the rest of the bodywork I'll do now. Right, so that's the wash on there. Uh, you can see it's toned down uh, the legs nicely, and all of the armor, all of the armor metal work, and so on. There, so I've got to let that dry. Uh, it's going to take a while, uh, and then you're going to uh, tone down the, the metal work even more with some Agrax Earth Shade. Uh, but we'll let that dry, and then we'll put the final wash on next. Right, so then the next wash is the Agrax Earth Shade. Um, the armor plate here is. is been darkened enough so you don't need to worry about the red so much it's more the metal work uh, that needs to be picked out so uh, wherever you've done that also uh, I'm going to go over the uh, panel here from this Imperial Fist Flyer not all of it I don't want to the areas that I'm going to repaint yellow don't need to do so much but anywhere where there's like battle damage and so on just give that another Give that a coat and it will tone that area down just that bit more. It just helps the highlights stick out even better. Um, this piece of metal work just here can be toned down. And this uh, engine exhaust as well. Just put a coat of that on. Around the base as well if you want to darken that down. Don't have to. Uh, but just like so. So then it's just the metal work really legs and you'll see this adds like a brownish tinge it's kind of a not full on rust but it's adding that weathered campaign kind of look which is I think what you're after here um, so just filling that all out like so and it just means the highlight will look better when you pick out the metal later on it means uh, you're pushing the metal more into the background and more of the emphasis will be on the turret the red and the, the transfers and that kind of Thing, which is where you want the emphasis to be you're just putting because you're not putting as much effort into this armor work here so you don't want it to stand out quite as much just working the brush around so i'll just coat the rest of that just a nice coat again soaking up too much excess uh, and then letting that soak in and you can see the difference there's the metal work there just toned down it just knocks it down the shade looks pretty good so wherever all the metal works been done. Um, just looking, maybe the searchlight there. 
don't really need to touch the rest. Maybe just where these missiles are on this weapon. So I don't want to disturb the Seraphim Sepia, but I do want to fill in, and I'm risking it here using a larger brush, but wherever these missiles are, just around them. There's like a recess there around them. And there's a gemstone just in there, just go around that. And then this missile pod here as well. Gonna fill that in with this Seraphim Sepia. I'm getting a little bit on the panel, but I'll be repairing that and picking that out with the Ashabti bone again later on, so it doesn't matter so much. Just trying to be quite neat. And that's looking that's looking way better. You're picking out the detail there nicely. Let's just fling that in like so. So I'll just carry on here. Uh, the barrel of the gun, the metal work there can all be done as well. Just all filled in. You just complement him. It's already been done. All right, so I'll just keep going here. All right, so that's that wash on there. Just going to let that dry now. I've also done the panels here. Uh, remember with the uh, bronze that needs to be done uh, back behind the weapon there as well I've filled in the engine exhaust exhausts on top and so on all the uh, metal work around here anywhere where the metal is showing can be done uh, this thing here as well done that as well it's just gonna just coat the whole thing just gonna let it dry now but that's the wash stage finished ready for hi final highlights will be uh, the third and final stage okay so uh, the washes have dried now that's completely dried out ready for the next stage I um, don't think it really matters where you start um, I'm going to do the smaller details first and the bigger areas will come to a bit later on um, so we're going to do these blue gems here or sort of targeting system bits so the first stage just to take a decent brush I'm going to use a standard brush here nice new one with a good tip and then if you see an original how it works so uh, it's a highlight in the bottom right hand side and then uh, the dots of white and top left as I always follow that rule there you can see it on these ones on top here as well uh, so just zoom in so you can see so just so you can see it there it's the highlight bottom right hand corner and then top left the dot of white there and the same same in here on a larger gem you can put two dots of white um, just to create an extra bit of Sometimes it looks good on a bigger gem just to have the two dots there because it's sort of a bigger sort of crystal or piece of glass. Um, so that's the effect we're going to go for here. The first thing I do, um, you may need to only do this on the larger uh, gems and that's to reinforce the blue, especially where it's been made very dark. So I just paint that on the about two thirds uh, of the gem there, bottom right corner, just leaving the top left dark. I'm just going to strengthen the blue up here as well. So just on the right hand side, leaving the top left hand side darker. I'm not going to do it on all of them, just on the, the bigger ones. It's just rolling around. Yeah, I'll do it on these ones underneath the hull here. They're just tucked in the dark. Just lift them a little bit. You don't have to do that, but I found it just it's kind of looks a bit better just to restore the original blue. Then, for highlighting, you can take the low fern blue and then keeping it, don't want it going on thick, but sort of a nice, sort of watered down consistency. Just highlight your bottom right hand corner. Yeah, so I'm just tucking it in. Just there, it's sort of a soft crescent, really, is what you're going for. Like so. Uh, that's gone on quite watery, so I'm gonna take a thicker amount and just reinforce what I've done. Like so. And just the same process, bottom right. and then bottom right again just there, wherever else, there's one just here 
needs to be done. There's one just tucked in here on the weapon. Shooting weapon. And that just picks that out. And then obviously you've got these ones underneath the hull to pick out as well. And then just spinning around. It's tucked in the dark there. Uh, but it's is visible just tucking it just in there so you can see it shining through the dark there just looking around making sure there's none others note so wash the brush out take ceramite white brush with a uh, an ice tip just a standard brush it's quite a new one so it's in good condition and I'm just going to load up some white just on the tip and then just dot in the top left hand corner like that you probably see it showing through there just dotting it in this one up here uh, we'll go for two dots because it's bigger one and two as long as you can make the bigger one uh, the one at the top a bit bigger should look more realistic and then just dotting in on top here one there on there. There is actually one just under here, so I'll just dot that one in and then just do the others. One, one here, like so. Looking good, and there's probably just one on the back here to do. Nice, you can see that showing through. It's a nice feature to have, it does look really nice. Uh, I'm just going to touch in a little bit of this low fern blue here just to highlight that bottom right hand side but that's those gems finished they're a nice feature to have on the model nice introduction of blue uh, into the colour scheme as well looks pretty good right so next is the Ashabti bone uh, so it's these areas here you're wanting to repaint uh, again paint nice consistency standard brush and then uh, just filling out uh, the armour plate here, just neatening up like so looking pretty good just a little bit went in the gap there, I'm just going to use a wet brush just to dig that out and that's it like so so where it's shaded in that gap there, I'm just going to leave that um, that looks pretty good so I won't fill that in and then just along there Again, a little bit of paint's gone in this gap here, so I'm just going to use a wet brush to get rid of it, like so. So, just that kind of repair, just going to do that to all of the cream areas, picking it out. It's a little bit hazy, you can sort of see uh, background colour come through. doesn't matter too much, you can do a second coat just to neaten up to finalise it. But a little bit showing for it doesn't really matter, it's probably chipped and battle damaged and grimy anyway. Uh, but you're just restoring that and leaving the shaded areas uh, where the wash has gone in. So I'll do that on the rest of the model here. All right, so that's the uh, the cream done. So just picking out all the details along here. Uh, two coats seems to be pretty good. One coat pretty much bogs it out, and then just another coat just on the areas, sort of larger panel areas where you want them more look solid looking. But it looks pretty good. It's not perfectly clean. Don't want it to look, you know, perfect because it's sort of battle worn anyway. Uh, it's gone around there. Just where I've done the cream along there, just uh, went round and strengthened that, and then also these bits here and here I've done, and let's just bring in some light there to the model. Later on, uh, there'll be some chipping to do uh, here as well on this cream, just to add some more sort of battle damaged effect to that as well. That's the cream done. Don't need to highlight with, with mixedness of white or anything like that because we'll put chipping on top anyway. So we've got the gems done. Uh, we've got the uh, the cream colour done. Now, um, as I mentioned, doing the, the silver underneath here, if we had gone for cream, we'd have spent a long, long time just picking out all of the cream around all of these, uh, and it would take a long, long time. It does look really good, but just by way of getting around that, I've just gone for silver instead. Um, and it just the main attention is now on the main body here in the weapon system, just there. Um, so that's that finished. The next uh, colour will do will be just to work on these missiles just to get them finished up. Right, so to do these missiles, uh, these are the missiles here. 
these ones here. Uh, they're actually a combination of like a light grey and then the tips are yellow. Um, so I've got a number of colours laid out. I've got my administratum grey which is sort of the lighter grey uh, and then I've got some ceramite white and then some flash kits yellow. So the first thing you want to do is take your administratum grey and just to repaint those missiles uh, in the grey colour. So just basically repaint them. Around you want to be neat here, just going up to their edge, where the edge joins into the, the bodywork there. Again, you can do two coats if you want, just to make it nice and solid. So you can see there I've done the the bottom one, and then just working on this one here. So just down as neat as possible. So I'll paint all the missiles and then I will uh, sort of just repaint them again just to make them solid grey. Nice flow to the paint that's going on. You see that one there's dump and this last one here. It's just nice details. I love this weapon system here on these Onagars, this Icarus array, just with its array of different weapons, the long barreled auto cannons and then this cluster of different rocket systems. I think they just look fantastic. Really does look nice. It's good to make the effort to make this look good. Uh, just to draw the eye's attention to this display of weaponry. So that's that one. And then also this, these cluster rockets here, these small ones, uh, are grey and will be finished exactly the same as well. So you can pick them out as well. Just rolling the brush around make sure I get the whole shape. But I'll carry on here. I'm going to finish these ones off uh, and then also um, I'm just going to do a second coat of this grey. So uh, that's that done. Pick out the missiles just nicely there. Then they come with a uh, orange, or yeah, sorry, yellow tip to them. But it's not like a, uh, a solid yellow straight from the pot. Um, so just to tone that down a bit, just mix it with some white. So flash gets yellow, just putting it on the palette here. And then I'm going to mix it with some ceramite white, just to make an off yellow colour. And then just going to paint the tip here. So sort of running the brush just around, just making sure that I get it sort of even. So you, can, you can see it just there looking pretty good and then just going to do the tips on the others you can make the tips small or as big as you want just working the brush around here making sure I get underneath you can tell if they look right just by looking straight on and you can see if they're uh, uneven then you just need to bring the brush around and correct them they're looking pretty good so that's them on there just showing you how they look and then also just going to do the, the little tips on these other missiles as well this little cluster rocket system like so just touching them in it does look cool when you put these paint these missiles up this way so pretty happy about that's come out just strengthening them here and just making sure they're all nice and even. Same size, and so on. Yep, so pretty happy with how that's come out. So that's all the missiles done. Um, so that that inside now uh, is, is well on its way to getting finished. And I reckon it's the main feature, one of the main features of this model for sure. So it's worth making the effort just there. Uh, but that's that bit finished. Then whilst you've got that mixed up yellow, where it's that yellow and that white, uh, I thin it down a little bit and then just use it to paint the insides of this lamp here. It's still a watered down version because you don't want it solid. But I'm just painting it in there. You see the difference? And that's just to show that that searchlight is sort of on. And there's some light coming out of it. It looks pretty good when you just pick it out. Being careful not to get it anywhere else. Don't want to fill in any gaps. But just pick out the detail there. And you can see it just gives it sort of a a little bit of a glow effect, just like it's on 
which it would be. So just filling that out neatly. I've thinned the paint down so it does uh, go into the cracks and so on quite well. Uh, not the cracks, but it goes in nicely to that. The detail there. I've just got a bit of the paint on the the grill there, so I've just taken it off with a wet brush. But there it is, it's looking good. And then we'll, we'll highlight that with silver as well later on the actual grill itself. So there, that's the uh, searchlight done. Just going to touch a little bit in this corner. To there, just being careful. That's okay. And then bottom right corner. Tricky bit because it's a very small opening. But yeah, looking good. So there it is. There, that's that bit done. Using the same yellow as you did for the missile. It's just a watered down version of it. So that's that bit finished. Uh, we'll maybe do the bronze next, the bronze trim. Right, so for the bronze trim, which is on, on this model, which is really just this bit here, um, we take the original Hashak copper, and again, just putting it onto a palette. You'll see the colour as it goes on, but it's the original Hashak copper. Just adding some water to this one, just to thin it down. And then I take the mithril silver, or the, the new colour as it's called, is Runefang steel. And mixing about a third of that in to make a lighter version of this copper here. You'll see the colour as it goes on. And I'll just add some to this edge. So that you can see the original colour. And that's the, the highlight colour going on. Just there, so a lighter version. Not too much silver because you don't want it to you don't want it to look uh, you know drowned out with the silver, but you do want a lighter version of the hash up copper. So there's there's the original and then that's the, the new highlight and it just really lifts that out. Then just gonna go carefully around all the details, picking out the little uh, st studs there. Like so. And then any areas where the red's been flicked on by accident, you just repair that. By painting over it, should cover it no problem. Yeah, pretty happy with how that's coming out. It's a lovely colour when you get a nice finish on it. Complements the model really well. So that's that, and then you've got to paint this, this side. And then remember to do like the top and the side of the uh, panels as well. Wherever they're seen, you can't really see them there. There's a bit there that can be seen. The bottom as well. And just swing them around. That bit can be seen, and just that, like so. And you can see that another nice feature there to that model. That trim looks really nice. But that's that finished. Um, I'll do the other uh, three here. All right, so uh, we've done all the edging here, all the trim there. The bronze is done. They're actually making pretty good progress. It's sort of some areas here that are sort of annoying uh, and we're getting them finished off just small things out of the way and then just some main colors too really the red and the silver is the two big ones and then the model sort of ready for chipping and, and doing transfers and effects and so on so making good progress um, so what we're going to do now is the uh, the admex sort of symbol here show it to you on a finished one see it just there uh, and then there's also one there's two there's one just here and then yeah, there's one just on the on the back here. So quite easy, they'll be chipped up later on. So it's just the colouring of them really. Uh, so we're gonna go for we'll do the black first. So you just your details picked out for you on here by the washes. So you just use black to fill in the right hand side. And it's it's one half of this circle, so just to there exactly. It's actually marked by a line here. They sculpted it on this particular one, like so, and then around and just to there. Then also uh, half the skull, but it's on the opposite side. So it's this side of the skull to there, like so. And then I'll do the same on the other side, exactly the same here as well. 
there's no line on this one, so I'm just free handing where it joins. But you can correct it a little bit with the white. You come back to it and then just splitting the skull in half here with the black and filling in the left hand side of the skull. That's that done. And we can go back to the side ones, pretty much it's half dry there. So we get the the white paint and then fill in the white to just here. The studs, uh, little rivets, doesn't matter going over them because we're going to add in a little bit of ink wash to those for effect so they will get re sort of shaded anyway. So I'm not too worried about going over them. And then just neatly up to there. Neatly up to there. And just filling the rest of this thing in. I don't worry about painting the sides at all. It's already silver and shaded, so that's good enough. Just going around neatly around the skull. I will colour the studs in completely. They'll be neater just by dabbing a bit of wash on them later on. Then just reinforcing this white here. Just painting over it again, just so you get a nice solid colour. Again, we'll put an effect and wash over them later on. So pretty happy with that. Uh, and then uh, we'll paint the right hand side of the skull. So just the right hand side of the skull now. Just do you want to be neat with this one? Pretty happy with how that's come out. So that's the symbol there. Uh, there's going to wash go on top. A bit of chipping as well to add more effect, so it should look pretty good. I'll do the one at the back, and that's that finished for now. Right. So with those bits done, uh, we'll go on to the, one of the main colours now. We'll do the silver. So I've got my uh, iron breaker. Swing them all around. I'm just going to show you how to paint these, the ends of these uh, auto cans here. Same process. I'm using a standard brush. Just painting over the detail. Like so, on here, so you can see one coat should do it. You can do another coat just to strengthen some areas, uh, but it just you can see the comparison there. Just takes away a lot of the dirt and grime that's been created by his washes, but still leaves some in the in the recesses and details. So just onto that. Like so, that just picks that out nice. Then just for things like the legs, I sort of pick out details, the main bits, so the circles here on these legs can be picked out. There, and there. This circle here, just main bits really. Don't want to pick out every single detail, just bend ages, it's just sort of picking out the main bits. Like so. Uh, these bars here coming out, pick them out. I'm just running the brush, sort of running the brush along, just letting it skim over the details, just being careful. Don't want to fill any detail in side of this foot panel. Pick that out and then sort of in here as well, just part of that there, not the whole thing but just the sort of the highlighting it. This bit here, again not the whole thing but sort of that bit in the middle would be more shiny, like there. Uh, a little bit of this cross beam, sort of the middle bit, and then just leave it. So much quicker but just as effective than just you know painstakingly going around painting every detail, you can just sort of pick out the main parts like that and that I reckon looks just as good. There it is before and there it is with the highlights on and that hasn't taken too long. Go around uh, things like all the the bars and bits here, don't worry about chipping for now, do that later on, but all the bars uh, and those bits can be neatened anywhere where the red's gone on and overlapped can be repaired with the silver uh, all of these handlebars and bits here uh, and then all the metal work over the whole model uh, just needs to be redone. You're sort of leaving dirt and grime behind because it's, it's battle seasoned, uh, but still you don't want it to look like a rusty hulk, so you sort of bring it back 
a lot of the silver. Things like this grill over the searchlight, you can just very carefully paint over that, takes away any yellow there, and just restores that as well. So just go around the whole of the model uh, with that silver. Right, so uh, all the silver's done here. Uh, you can just see it there on the detail on the legs. Just picking out sort of half of it, leaving a lot of it in shade, just the main parts just there, all around the bit here at the back, the exhaust, the guns, picking out all the rails, anywhere where the red's gone over. It's all been neatened up now and picked out, so let's just tidy that up. Still, that main part to do the red, before we come to that, um, I'm just going to do this little bit here. So this is just a little bit of extra how to do this debris here. So you've got a burnt out piece of wing here from this Imperial Fist Flyer. I'm just going to bring out a bit of the yellow on that, just to strengthen it a little bit. So I'm going to take the Flash Kits yellow and a little bit of white. Yeah, just give this one a mix. I'm just going to pick out, I'm going to leave sort of a burnt area and then just pick out some of the yellow just to line it up a little bit. So, some flash gets yellow. I'm going to put it onto my palette here and then some white as well. Take most of the paint out of the brush but still with some flow on it. And then I think sort of this area here um, I want to have as uh, quite sort of solid yellow. It's not going to be as damaged as the rest. So just fill that out just there. And then sort of just blotching it, letting the paint run dry on the brush and then using that to, to sort of fade it in. I'm going to cross over and do a little bit here. And then I reckon not much more, maybe a little bit just there, just on that corner like so, and that's it. So you're sort of doing it in just little blotched areas, just there and there, and then going to leave sort of a burnt area, and then that will help the chipping, it will make the chipping stand out a bit more. But that's that finished, the black's fine. That's that done. Doesn't take too long, you're adding a nice effect. So you've got the red here, the silver, and then there's just an area of interest. Um, but with that yellow, but it's not glaring because you're putting washes and effects over the top, sort of mixing it in with the base quite well. We'll just chip that up just so you can see the effect on this one. So just uh, the iron breaker straight from the pot here. And I'm going to use a standard brush with a good tip. And just going to chip this up here. I had scratched some battle damage already onto this. So I'm going to follow um, those lines that have already been made. Just there. Then some chipping on the the black here, just more chipping than you usually, wherever the damage is you put more chipping because that's where the scratches and so on would be, so just some around here and all around here where the metals collided with something on impact that's just picking that out and all the shading and the inks there just help to emphasize the uh, scratches there, dents just going to run around this edge here, it just gives the Debris, a nice metallic look, which it should do because it is, you know, it's a metallic uh, armoured vehicle flyer. Just adding some scratches across the, the yellow just there. Making sure I catch the sides. A bit more on this black here. And pretty happy with that. See, so yeah, that's kind of really happy with that, that's nice. And then, similar thing here, you've got this exhaust. Not going to paint this one. A difference of this silver here. This one's clean. I'm covering most, you know, fair amount of the panels. This one I just want to edge a few of the panels, just to show that it's older metal, more corroded. To it, I want to fill in solid panels here because it will look too fresh. Right, to look burnt out and rusted and abandoned. So, just sort of picking out the corners and some of the lines, but not neatly. Just sort of random, sort of a random blotchier effect. Still being neat not to go into the shaded areas and just covering those ends. Like so, and you can see the, the chips on there. Just spin around, just going to tuck in there the edge of the exhaust just there. And there's a bit of metallic metal work, metal work just here. Like so, just on there. That's that done. Doesn't take too long, nice effect. Plus, you'll have the green to add of the uh, flock as well, just to further enhance that base. Um, 
So that's that done. So we're going to the red now. So you're going back to your corn red, which is the original colour, which has just been shaded on here. Then you want to use yeah, this kind of brush for your working in your detail. So areas like here, for example. So I would paint neatly with this here. Like so, and any panels you see wanting to repaint the panel, being careful not to go over the shaded areas here around these um, rivets here, just painting around them. Correcting any mistakes and blotches of the uh, wash, where it's sort of dried in a blotch, you can just go around and correct all of that, all these edges. The extreme highlight will do a bit of orange later on, so you're just sort of looking to refill out the red here. Now this is probably going to take the longest colour out of all of them, uh, but when you do the smaller bits first, you're sort of encouraged on knowing that you've sort of got all of the other fiddly bits out of the way, and now you're on to the final stages, so just filling that out there. It goes on bright and then dries darker. Just getting that done. Then along the top here, just really just being careful not to go into the the shaded areas. Just filling in the panels, and then uh, on top this one. Nice pigment to this one. Should only need one coat, I should think. May need a second on the larger sort of panelled areas. It's like so, you can see that going on, just all repairing and neatening that up. Then for uh, larger panel areas, we'll go up to something like a standard brush or base base coat brush, sorry. Just adding a bit of water to the brush there, just to make sure it flows on nicely. And for these larger areas, you know, your larger brush strokes you can use to fill that out. I reckon a couple of coats for this one, there's some spots and some dark patches. It may take a little bit extra paint to get right. Just going neat up to that edge just there. And then brush strokes all the way down just to keep it all nice and even. So you can see that's the correct colour going on there. It will dry darker, it goes on brighter and then it tones down. And then round here, this all needs to be redone. Just going around the rivets, just leaving the shading in place for them. And then Going in the panel areas. Like so, so that's looking pretty good. Like that, just keep going. The rest of this panel here to do. Again, being careful to go around the rivets. And then, once the neat part's done, then just filling out with nice neat brush strokes. So, like so. Yep, so we let that let that dry. We're obviously going to work all the way around. Let it dry. Do a second coat in the areas where you can see it coming through if it's ghosty at all. Uh, but that's sort of the neatened up version. It will make a big difference. It'll neaten the whole thing. It's going to lighten it up. See the difference in colour here. It's all dark here with the wash. And then when you tidy it up, it sort of comes up to that kind of colour. Then plus you'll have that orange highlight to do as well which will further lighten up the model. But it's going to take a while, going to get the rest of this red done here. First um, layer and then a second coat as well, just to neaten it up, just in the areas it needs to be done. Okay, so uh, done all the red there, just second coat where I needed to, just usually just on the main panels here where it's a bit ghosty, you can just do a second coat, just some nice thin down paint. Uh, but it's pretty good pigment, pigment there on that corn red, so looking pretty good. Uh, but that's that neatened up, that really has uh, brightened up the model and just tidied the whole thing up just there, it's looking pretty good. So, uh, next colour then is this orange. Um, you don't want to make it look too orange, just sort of the, the main edges uh, and then uh, leaving the rest red. You're just sort of emphasising the colour but not taking away from the original. So I've got the uh, blazing orange here, or troll slate orange as it's called. And I'm watering it down a fair bit. If you go solid orange it can look too strong. Uh, and then I'm just basically picking out the edges here, so just like the edge of there. 
don't want it to be so so strong it starts to distract and take away from the original colour so sort of watered down maybe 50 50 something like that just doing a thin edge around there you don't have to do every edge if you don't want just sort of the corners and the tips would be the main ones that you do want to get then just run the thinner edge down there gonna skip a bit and then carry on just here then running down there if you want to make the edge the highlight stronger then just do a second coat uh, of the orange in some areas but that's that picked out. It's not too noticeable, but it, it does bring out the features subtly, but quite effectively. Uh, I'm just going to mix up a little bit more with my paint. So the, like the corner here, then just run the brush along the edge there. Just made a mistake. Just use my finger just to remove that. Start again. Maybe a bit too much paint on the brush for this thin edge. That's better. Okay, so just like that, just picking out that edge and then turn the brush sideways, just going to run it down this edge along here that just highlights that up quite nicely, we've got chipping to put on top of that as well I'm just going to carry on with that there, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the effect so there, just zooming in so you can see the effect of the the orange line, not solid, too strong an orange, it's going to be too distracting but just enough to edge it to pick out the details, it does pick them out and emphasise them but it still keeps the original colour. So I'm just going to carry on with that uh, highlight there around the rest of the vehicle, just picking out the main areas like that. And uh, just to mention, you can pick out the little studs here. Some of them you might want to chip. Others you might want to just um, highlight them with orange, just dots of orange on them as well. Uh, but that's, that's for, uh, just to mention, things like this, the inside of this, there's no real edge to do with these. Um, so I don't put any orange on the inside of them. The edge really is this metallic stuff. Yeah, but the edge of that one you can do um, and then just sort of round all the edges here and rivets and so on around the main hull here, the main part of the bodywork alright so that's the orange done, I've gone all the way around and then by keeping that paint quite thin it's not overpowering you don't want it to be too strong an orange as it totally uh, distracts uh, from the original colour but that's that done, looking pretty good again it just sharpens all the edges up, makes the thing look uh, nice and neat as well so that's that highlighted stage, it does take a little while to do, but I think it's worth it, you get a nice result there uh, with all the details picked out uh, just on the June crawler. Uh, so that's that done, so we've got sort of uh, details to do now, like there's a stripe that runs down here, need to get that put on, that's just a case of painting that on, uh, and then we've got some chipping effect to do as well, uh, and then the uh, transfers as well which I'll show you how to do in this video but getting along really well and if you compare these two together now uh, they're pretty much there so I think they look really cool when you get them in a set I was just comparing the two together on the table look really good I hope to have three of them uh, actually in this Guitari army so I think three of them will have quite a presence on the table so just a case of white paint uh, just to paint this marking here you paint the base colour first of all and then there's washes and effects to do on it a bit later on. So I'm going to use a standard brush once to do this as neat as possible. And the stripe just runs down there. So it's a thinner paint I'm using because uh, that helps the paint to flow. And just running it here. So it runs, I'm just line it up here so I can get it straight. It's nice, nice and thin this paint, so it's easy, easy to correct your lines. So that line's on there. I'm gonna try and get the width here right, and then just running it down here. And again, very nice flow to the paint, which makes a big difference. Okay, still a bit of correcting to do on this to get it right, but it's looking not too bad. This is the key bit here to get it neat. So I've got my, you can see my fingers here resting this on the leg with the brush, uh, with the hand that's holding the brush, and then fingers here, and then uh, this arm is resting against the table as well. It just stops all the shaking, um, and it means you can have better control over the brush. So quite happy with that. I'm just 
strengthen it up as much as I can here making sure it looks pretty straight pretty good the tricky part is then to follow the line through uh, and get it on this top part here so I mean just using my eye as a reference using my eye to line it up as best as possible any mistakes you can just correct with the um, corn red that looks pretty good try to make it look nice and sharp clean cut that's not too bad okay that looks all right so you can see that stripe on there so when that's um, dried it's still taking a while to dry we'll do a second coat better to do layers of thin paint than thick layers they go all blotchy and you get that horrible texture that's not nice so thin layers of paint is better like so and then I'll just give this another coat just there looking good okay so that's that done uh, we'll leave transfer so we'll go on to um, chipping we'll do chipping next get that done that's another uh, key stage to finish off right so for the chipping I've just got my iron breaker paint it's nicely watered down not too watery but there's a nice flow to it my brush is nice and damp and then you just want to do any areas where you think that the vehicle would be bashed around and chipped so things like the corners just adding a chip onto there and I think with these I've decided not to do too much chipping it's going to save you a lot of work and then when you do too much chipping it begins to distract away and it actually doesn't look very good so less uh, less is better uh, when it comes to chipping here you want the main focus to be the actual color uh, and not the effect that you've done I'm just putting a little bit here and there so the types of there's different ways to do it there's so you just logically where you think you know bashes will take place usually the raised areas handles corners of bits little rivets you can put a little nick of color onto them that kind of thing but not too much other type of uh, chipping is just like little dots like this a little stone flicks you think even of cars that they get stones flick up on the on the on the motorway the highway they flick up and they take out little divots of paint same thing on the battlefield you got pieces of debris and shrapnel flying around so not too many I've done a few there and that's don't want to do too much the other type that you can do is uh, scrapes and bashes or something that's actually scraped along usually two next to each other looks quite good so something like that again I don't want to do too many I want to cascade a few bashes down this side and then we'll just do this bit here just to show you so that corner I reckon would take a hit definitely this part here quite strong there for chipping probably this little corner here corner on the other side maybe around the vision slit just there a couple of these rivets don't have to do all of them and the good thing is if you I've found that uh, times when you do rub and wear away this paint the original uh, spray underneath is silver so you actually will get a chip effect come through if you rub the paint away which is actually quite good and then I'll do a little bit in there so you've got see that chipping up so that now looks like a metallic object not something just been painted uh, but you're actually creating a metallic effect it's quite subtle but very very effective uh, so very happy with how this is coming out it's looking good so you do chipping there you also do it on the cream it should show up a fair bit just there just to show that it's all metallic as well I'm going to put a few chips along the top there uh, and then also black areas like here uh, you can put some chipping on again I don't want to do too much so I'm going to put a few scrapes along here not too much don't want to be a distraction there if you can see just a few bits like so um, so the the uh, pads here these protective bits they can get some so I think they get bashed along there maybe a few scrapes where they've moved through terrain 
like so, so things like that. This one's going to obviously get a bit more chipping as well. I'd probably uh, do more chipping around where the the base is. You see here on this one, put more chipping along there because it's near the ground. It's going to be coming a lot in more contact with debris and so on. So chipping effect. Then I'm going to do it on the rest of the model. Show you where I've been. Okay, so that's the chipping done there. You can see uh, it's gone on there. Not too much, as I've said. Sort of that's the kind of balance you're looking for. Just enough to show it's a metallic object, uh, but not over the top so that it starts to distract away from the overall colour and uh, scheme. So I've chipped up all the bread. Uh, then the cream area is inside here, and that part there I've done. Uh, then the bits here, just a little bit just on sort of the edges of the panels where it would rub them and get bashed and then sort of a higher concentration around the feet uh, where it's going to come in more contact with, with gravel and, and dirt and debris and so on so looking really nice chipped up this one as well that's all nicely chipped up and done, the one at the back also so that's virtually, I mean that's looking really nice now you're virtually there uh, so transfers next, there's a couple to do there's this one here uh, this 17, I think I'm just going to carry on the number 17 uh, onto this one and the third one that I do. And then there's these tiny little ones just there and there. I love to add, add transfers in. Again, not too many. It seems I found if you add loads of transfers, it distracts away from the overall scheme. But some nice ones keyed in uh, look good. I'm going to show you how to apply them properly so you don't get that ghosty haze behind. That's not on there at all, but I'll show you how that's done. And then there's some effects and some chipping on the actual transfer as well, we'll show you how to do that. So you uh, choose the transfers that you want and then just cut, I cut them out with a knife so there's a, a white transfer here just going to cut around here once the transfer is cut out I then uh, dunk it in the water so he's wet and then just leave him to the side just there. Let him soak. I'll just cut out the others. There's that 17 you need to cut out. And then there's also uh, one of these black ones here. I forgot to mention there's uh, a transfer just on here. You'll see it as we put it on. Um, that one needs to go on as well. I'll just dunk those. So they're softening up, ready to be taken off. Uh, then there is a couple of those triangular ones to do, so we'll just find them. One and two, just here. So we'll cut, cut those out. So I'll just let them sit there. So they'll soak. Just the side softening up nicely. So with transfers to stop that ghosty effect, um, I found that you just mix the water with a bit of PVA glue. So we put a bit of PVA on the palette, and that's going to be the backdrop um, for the transfer to go on. And when the PVA dries, it helps help the uh, transfer to stick to the model. Also, uh, it will take away uh, that haze kind of effect that you get. Uh, sometimes you get like a ghosty effect behind the transfer looks terrible um, but that's completely gone on that one and that's just by using that PVA glue so I'll show you how to do that here okay so I'm going to apply the big one here which is this uh, Admex symbol so take some water on my brush mix it with some or well, pick up a bit of PVA on the brush and then just mix it in with the water as I uh, put the water on here so that's where the transfer is going to go put the water on there, it's mixed with PVA, there's a haze of PVA there if you're not happy with the amount just a drop more PVA, mix it in like so then with a brush I'm just sliding the transfer off of its paper here and I've uh, got the transfer on the brush here, just lifting it up and then trying to place it as accurate as possible onto the model just there it's actually looking pretty good and then with a knife being very careful because you want to split the transfer um, so just very very gently it should just be floating nice there's a bit of movement there uh, just positioning the transfer so 
That does need to come to the right a bit. I'm going to use my finger just to move it a bit further. That's looking better. Just making sure, because once that transfers down, it's not really going to move, but that's looking pretty good. Now once you're really happy uh, with how it's positioned, then you can, you can use a bit of tissue just to push it down. So you, you want to be you want to do it confidently. You push it on, take it off, and not too much more than that. Um, I'm just using my finger there to make sure it's in position, just like so. That's it. Okay, so that's on, just there. That's that's where I want it to be. Just checking my one as a reference. Yep. So it's quite noticeable that one. It's good to get that one in position. There's a bit of movement there. If you make a terrible mistake, it's all going wrong. And then just quickly get some water, put it over the top, and work it round. And if it all goes really, really wrong and it breaks up, then just give up with the transfer. If you know it starts splitting and so on, and you just feel like I can't work with this anymore, then just take the whole thing off, and then use another one uh, but be very careful with the ones that you haven't got any spares for but usually on a transfer sheet or if you're collecting uh, Skitari uh, or any whatever faction it is usually you get plenty of spare transfers as you build your army up you get lots of spare transfer sheets so it should be okay but be careful uh, if they're unique ones uh, that can't be replaced but that's looking okay uh, so we've got a, a 17 to put on as well uh, one around the side, the little ones, all exactly the same process. So use your PVA glue mix to water in the area you're going to stick it on. Pick the transfer up with a brush, put it on, move into position by using a knife, but very careful because the knife can split the transfer or a pin or something like that. And then you can use your finger at times as well. Um, once you're entirely happy with the position, and you, you can dab it with tissue if you want to play safe. Um, then you can just leave it to dry. But I use the tissue to make sure sort of all the bubbles and and excess water is, is pushed out so you're not going to get any trouble there and then just leave it um, the purity seal later on will really help to to protect it and to stick it in uh, and to make sure it stays on but we do have chipping and effects to add to that a bit later but we'll get the rest of these transfers put on and then we'll do some effects all right so uh, transfers done here i uh, got the 17 on now different symbol on this one uh, if you see here it's 17 that looks like a, see a triangle on top, I think that's a delta in Greek. Um, and then this one has got a, like an E on it. Um, just show you here. Is there a different symbol, an E? I think it might be an epsilon, perhaps, in Greek there. Um, the variety has come from the Games Workshop transfer sheet there. Um, gives you a whole load of uh, numbers there. So squadrons are free, and it gives you a different uh, designation for each one. So you can do, I wanted, I wanted to have that somehow. On the models and I've just seen those sheets I've just seen those transfers there that's available on that sheet that Games Workshop provides uh, I'm not going to use the vast majority of transfers on here but handy there for doing a squadron uh, free vehicles uh, number whatever number you choose say 42 then I'll have one two three different designations for it which is good um, but that's that done they're glued they're dried now so we're ready to do a few effects with them next so first effect is to take some corn red and uh, you know, this symbol would be tr painted on, tr uh, sprayed on, however they do it, um, and then through battle damage, you know, bits of that paint would get chipped off in real life. So we're going to try and represent that by taking some corn red, nice damp brush, nice tip on the brush here using a standard brush, hardly any paint on. I'm just going to just spot on some corn red here, just to show areas where uh, the white is chipped away. Do you want to go over the top? Again, less is much better. But just being careful here. That may well do. I don't want to break up the, the, the symbol here. Then round to the 17. Just a little bit on there as well. Like so. I think that will do. And then round to here, uh, there would be a bit of that chipping on the white stripe. Again, don't want to do too much. That little bit's no harm. That's it. And that'll do. So that's that effect. 
easy enough. Then it should be dry now. I'm going to take some seraphim sepia. Now you're going to add in a little bit of rusty effect. We'll start actually with these Admex symbols. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to do some directional strokes down. Not too much because it is meant to be white. But I just want to make it a little bit washed out. And I'm going to go around the rivets here. Just going around a little bit on that skull and those rivets. A little bit around them. And then just want to do not too much. Predominant colour is meant to be white. So just a compliment really. Don't do too much. But you can do as much or as little as you want, you know, if you want to do a really washed out effect. And then just onto this uh, white stripe here, there's that rivet. I'm going to go around that. And then just running down there. And then on top, shading coming in. Just takes the, the harshness of the white away uh, and gives a, a washed out effect, which is pretty realistic. Then I'll go around to here. These will be dry now, these chips. and. I'm, on here so I can just run down some wash just onto there and onto that 17. Very nice and quick but just adds to the realism. That is that done. These transfers, these little diagonals, not really going to interrupt those, they're very small um, so not going to worry about doing any effects on them but pretty happy with how that's come out. Any excess, if you don't want too much wash in there just use your finger just to rub it away but just being careful, don't rub it too hard as the transfer could still come off. So that's that finished. So the transfer's done, being caref careful not to hand them until this, uh, the varnish is on. Uh, we're pretty much finished. Gonna put some flock on the base here and then we're ready to put some purity seal onto the model. Right, so for basing, uh, I use the verdant green color. It's uh, flock, it's a fine flock. It's available from TSS, Total System Scenic. They sell it in little packs. Verdant green is the name. Uh, you can look that up, or you can use Games Workshop, Flock, or whatever one you want, doesn't matter. But that's the one that I use as standard on my miniatures. Uh, and then I'll take just an old brush here, old brush, uh, take some PVA glue from the palette, and then just dab it on random places on the base. Now this is a big base, so I'm just going to sort of do a quarter at a time. So I'm just going to fill in sort of this area uh, randomly, get some Flock on there, and then I'll move on to another area. So. I think that'll be alright, just a little bit more towards the edge, just completely random. And then put it into my pot here of flock, make sure it goes onto all the areas where I've got the glue. Give it a tap, and we'll bash off back into the pot. Blow away the excess, use your thumb to wipe away any spare from the rim, because you are going to be spraying that, and then there's your flock just on there. So just get the rest of this model done. Again, being careful not to handle your transfers. So that's the uh, basing done there. You can see the, the flock going on. Nice uh, mixture of colours now. You've got the green, yellow, red, silvers uh, all coming together to finish that model off. But that's that model finished now. Remember just to wipe, wipe away the spare flock from the rim, like so, and then you're ready to put a layer of varnish on. Uh, so I use Games Workshop Purity Seal. It's, it's the best varnish out there. Don't spray too heavy. Or too close, it's just sort of a light coat uh, moving the model around uh, and that will seal everything in, it will seal in the flock all the paints uh, and then also um, your transfers, it will help protect or add a layer of protection for them. I, I never have transfers come off my miniatures even after years and years um, so that purity seal does a nice job in sealing it in so give it a coat of that uh, then the model will be finished um, and then it will come up something like this, not too much difference, slight more sheen to it uh, but not too much, but pretty much the same. It's a nice squadron now too. Hope to have another one. Really impressive model. Nice big model here. For the Skatari, quite a presence on the table. And hopefully we'll be on patrol, uh, denying the skies uh, to the opponents of the Skatari. But we'll have to see how well these things do in games. But it's just a bigger project to show you how to make something bit bigger for Skatari. You know, we've covered some larger, more challenging things. Uh, and transfers covered in here as well. But there it is, that's the in-depth painting tutorial uh, for Skitari. Just follow along step by step and then you can achieve these same results. There it is, keep a look out for more in-depth painting tutorials for different factions uh, here on the Plus channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.